So far we've looked at lots of different kinds of variables. We looked at strings and numbers and booleans and we even got into arrays, but arrays were a little bit limited in that they could give us multiple values and we could have multiple elements in them, but each one was just numbered, so we couldn't really identify what was what. Uh, so we've looked at these regular variables and they've allowed us to group data together with arrays, but uh, objects give us a little bit more capability. They allow us to provide some structure and some, some operations that we can use within our programs or within our app script and our functions, however we're going to use our code. Uh, objects are basically code representations that have properties and methods. Now let's talk about what those are. So an object, you know, any kind of object is just some everyday thing. You know, you can think about a bank account as an object, or you can think about a bicycle, or a car, or pretty much anything that you can think about in, in the real world can be modeled as an object. And we like to break things down when we're talking about objects into properties and methods. So a property is just something that describes a, an object, something that we can use to say this is the way it is. Uh, for example, you know, a bank account is going to have a balance and an owner. Those are going to be properties. So we can think of a, a numeric value for, for what the balance is for a bank account. Uh, we can also think about, you know, who owns that bank account. And there are many other properties that we could use to describe bank accounts. For a bicycle, we could think of uh, properties like a color, you know, what color is it, what style is it, how, how high it is, you know, what kind of bicycle it is. Uh, we've got a lot of different properties we could think about there. Then we think about methods as actions that this object can perform. You know, objects are going to be able to perform a lot of different types of uh, actions. So we, we call all of those methods. So a bank account, we might withdraw from our bank account. We might deposit to our bank account. And with a bicycle, we might change its gear. We may brake. We may pedal it. You know, we may do a lot of different things. But objects give us this capability to kind of take real world concepts and model them in a way that makes sense that we can put things together and that we can kind of have them uh, built into their own thing. They can own their own data. They can operate on their own data. So how do we actually build these? Well, we can create objects using a couple of different ways in, J in AppScript or in JavaScript. Uh, the first way is you might just create new object, and we can do that. We could create bike as a new object. We could create bank account as a new object. But we also might use curly braces. And this is actually pretty common to see in JavaScript. When we're building objects that aren't going to be used for a very long time that we might just throw away or we might use once, uh, we might use this notation where we use a curly brace. And what this does is create a new object with no properties and no methods. And then on the right side, you might see here, we might use functions to create our objects. So we build a function called bank account and we do lots of different things with it. And then uh, we actually use a new, we create a new bank account as opposed to a new object or as opposed to just using the curly braces. Uh, this is actually going to be a useful way for us to reuse our code, which we'll see when we get into actually defining properties and methods. So we can define properties a couple of different ways. You know, when we define, when we actually create the object, we can add properties to it. So you can see on the left side here, we create a new bike and we set that equal to an object, then we give it a color. So bike.color just basically says we're adding a property to, to bike. We're going to call that property color and we're going to set that value equal to blue. We're going to do the same thing with height. We're going to create a property called height. We're going to add it to the bike object and we're going to set it equal to 26. And you can see we're doing something similar with bank account. We're creating a new object for bank account. We're giving it a balance property, setting that to $3,221.12. And then we're giving it an owner and we're just saying the owner is just now we can also use this using, or we can also do this using the curly brace notation. Uh, we can say var bike is equal to, and then we just build this object. Its color is going to be blue, and its height is going to be 26. So we can we can build objects a couple of different ways. Uh, as, as we've seen both of these, you know, as we look at our code, you know, we're going to see a lot of new object. We're going to see a lot of the curly braces. Uh, these are both pretty common. But if we want to reuse code, we might want to use a constructor, and a constructor allows us to build many objects that have common behaviors that have uh, the same kinds of properties and we can use this constructor function to build this over and over again so a constructor is a special kind of function and even though we say function we're really defining something that's going to give us an object now this is going to be a little bit weird because when we define the function we're not returning anything but we're going to actually access it using new so that's the big difference. Before, when we defined a function, we could call it just by using the name of the function. When we define this as an object, we're going to use new, which is going to just tell the program we're, we want a new object. We want to save some space for an object. We're going to store that somewhere, and uh, we want to be able to use that object later. 
So this special construct function is called a constructor, and uh, we, we can use parameters with it too to initialize the properties for an object. And we use the this keyword, and that just refers to the object that's currently being created or currently being used. So on the left side here, you see we have function bike, and we're going to set bike color and size. And you can see we're going to create a property, this.color is equal to bike color and this dot height is equal to size. Now down below that you'll see where we can actually demonstrate how this works. We're going to create a variable called bike and we're just going to set it equal to a new bike. We're going to pass in blue and 26 which is going to uh, set the color to blue and the height of the bike to 26. Now on the right side you'll see that we do things a little bit differently. Uh, on the left we have bike color and we're setting this dot color but that can actually be the same uh, same variable name as something some property in our object. So function bank account owner we're gonna start off just by setting the bank account balance to zero so we set this dot balance equal to zero we don't have to make that a property we can just set that however we like we can calculate it we can set it equal to a particular default number and we're setting the owner to owner here so this dot owner is equal to owner basically we're differentiating between these two because we're saying one of these owner is the parameter and this dot owner is the bank accounts owner and then down at the bottom you can see how we're using this var bank account equals new bank account we're just creating a new bank account and the owner is going to be Joe we can also define methods in a couple of different ways. So on the we can use inline functions, uh, and this is going to be a little bit different based on how we're actually creating our objects. So on the left side, you can see we're creating a bank account as a new object, and on the right side, we're using the curly braces. Uh, pretty much pretty similar actually so on the left side each one of the uh, each one of the lines is a separate statement we're gonna create a new object we're gonna add a balance property to that object and we're going to set it to three thousand two hundred twenty one dollar or three thousand two hundred twenty one point twelve uh, we're going to create an owner property. We're going to set it equal to Joe. Uh, and then on the right side, we're doing something similar, but we're not doing this as a separate set of statements. We're just saying, create this object. It's going to have a balance that's this value. It's going to have an owner that's this value. Then we get into our actual function. or our, uh, This is where we define our method. So we're going to define a method, and we're going to call it withdraw. And it's going to just be, uh, it's going to pass in a property or a parameter called amount, and we're going to subtract that amount from the balance. So on the left and right side, the implementation is very similar. Just how we're defining them is a little bit different. And you can see on the left, we're using bank account dot withdraw is equal to function. And we're just naming the function here. This is just creating an anonymous function that we're assigning into this variable or this value withdraw. Uh, and we're doing the same thing on the right. We're just, you know, creating this new method. We're calling it withdraw and we're assigning this anonymous function to it. Uh, down at the bottom, you can see how this actually works. Uh, if we were to run this code, you know, we would create, we have this bank account and it's got a balance. So either one of these is going to operate the same way. They both have a balance property. When we call this withdraw method, what's happening is that 50, so if you see bank account dot withdraw 50, that 50 now becomes amount and then we run this code. So this dot balance is equal to this dot balance minus amount or minus equals amount. This dot balance is going to be three thousand two hundred twenty-one dollars and twelve cents. Uh, we're going to subtract fifty from it, and then this still this is still around. So what we should see is balance is three thousand two hundred twenty-one or point twelve. Uh, then we withdraw fifty, and then we should see that it's seventy or this fifty minus that. So three thousand one hundred seventy-one point twelve is the after withdrawing fifty, the balance is going to be three thousand one hundred seventy-one point twelve. Uh, so we can use these functions to manipulate our properties as well as to do other things that we might need to do. We can also define the methods in a constructor. This allows us to reuse our code a little bit more effectively. So here you can see this is very similar to what we were doing when we were defining a uh, method using the new object uh, approach we can use this dot withdraw is equal to a function just creating this anonymous function and assigning it to withdraw so that we can call withdraw later with some amount and we can use this function here's a good example of just a complete object so if we create a object called person using function person we pass in two parameters we're going to use those to initialize a first name and a last name last name property then we can have two methods here we can have a get full name and a get greeting uh, get full name is just going to give us the first name and the last name and then get greeting is just going to create a sentence out of that so get greeting is actually going to call this dot get full name then you can see down in the bottom left corner how we use that Joe is equal to new person Joseph Smith Sam is equal to new person Samantha Jones uh, 
logger.log joe.getgreeting and sam.getgreeting, it's going to give us hello Joseph Smith and hello Samantha Jones. And if we take a step and look at how that's actually going to run, uh, get greeting is going to go into the person's get greeting method. It's going to see that there's a function defined for that. That function is going to return hello, and then it's going to call this dot get full name, which is then going to go into the get full name method, and it's going to see there's a function defined for that. We're going to return this dot get first name plus a space plus this dot last name. So that's going to build this little sentence. Uh, you know, so we kind of call from get greeting into get full name, and it's accessing the data for this object. And you can see how all of this is kind of really close together. And in using a lot of different objects, we're going to make our program pretty easy to understand. So objects can be very useful and a lot of programmers use a lot of objects just because they're a nice way to structure data and group things together that, in a way that makes sense. We get lots of benefits from objects. You get modularity of your code so that your code can kind of work in more generic ways and it can kind of be reused over and over again. Uh, that also allows us to test little pieces of our code and make sure that they work properly. We can encapsulate data. Uh, in App Script and JavaScript, we can't do it quite the same way we can do in other languages, but we can put a bunch of our properties together so that it's easier for us to understand uh, exactly what belongs to this object and what operations this object should be able to execute. It also simplifies our code because instead of doing a lot of different calculations right in line in our functions, we can actually create objects that are going to allow us to, to process a little bit better, a little bit more cleanly, and it's going to allow our code to read a little bit more just like normal spoken language. Now, dates are some objects that we might use in app scripts. Uh, they are special kinds of objects, and they're all defined for us. And we can use these when we get values from our spreadsheet that happen to be dates. They'll come into our functions as dates if we if we pass in those values as parameters. So dates actually automatically work as the current time. So if we create a variable called var d and we set it equal to new date, it's just going to be whatever the current time is, whatever the current date is. We can also initialize it with other values. So we can initialize it with year we can initialize it with month, with day, with the hours, the minutes, the seconds, even the milliseconds. So if we create a variable YMD and we set it equal to a new date with 2017, 6, and 17, this is where things get just a little bit tricky with dates. Uh, when we're dealing with dates, num or our date of the month, our day of the month is, is pretty much just as you would expect. If we pass in 17, we're going to get the 17th day of the month. If we pass in 6, though, uh, months start with 0. So we talked in arrays how most things start with 0 when we're dealing with our, uh, computers. And months, for some reason, start with 0, whereas days of the month do not. And that can be pretty confusing. So, I, I mean, I didn't invent it this way, but it is, it is a little confusing and it is a little bit harder to understand. But understand that years work exactly as they're stated. M days work exactly as they're stated. Months are always one behind because they start with zero. So January is zero, February is one, March is two, and it's just a little bit confusing there. So in this last, uh, last date example, we're creating a date called more info and we're setting it to 2000 or July 17th 2017 at 2:45 p.m. Notice the 14 that's what actually makes this 2:45 p.m. or 2 p.m. as opposed to 2 a.m. because it works off of 24 or 23 hour time. So 0 would be midnight, 1 would be 1 a.m. to all the way up until 11 or 12 when we get to 12 that's 12 noon, 13 is 1 o'clock. 14 is 2 o'clock, but those are all p.m. times. So if we wanted to represent 11 p.m., we would use 23 there. Uh, but that's that's pretty normal if you're used to 20, you know, the 24-hour time. You know, they often call it military time because you might say, you know, 20, 2,300 hours, which would be 11 p.m. We get a lot of methods in Java or in App Script dates and JavaScript dates. Uh, we get full year, which will give us the year as a number. Uh, we get the month, which is going to be again zero through eleven. It starts with zero instead of starting with one. We can get the day of the month using get date. We can use get hours to get the hours of the the date object. We can get the minutes, the seconds, and we can even return a full string. So you can see here, this is going to give us a lot of information. Monday, July seventeenth, uh, two forty-five. Uh, it gives us the time zone. I'm currently in Eastern Standard Time, which is GMT minus four. Uh, we can manipulate dates. So the interesting thing about dates is if we use the set date, set month, set hours, whatever methods are available for us to use, uh, the date objects will create the proper result. So we create that date for July 30. Or if we create this delay for July, this date for July 31st, uh, 2017, using 2017, 6, and 31 as parameters. If we 
set its date to the current its date plus one, it's not going to give us July 32nd because it knows that's not a valid date. It's just going to roll that forward to August. So we can actually subtract and, and add and the date object will kind of perform the calculations to make everything work properly. Uh, so we're going to get into a few exercises using objects and dates. Uh, objects and dates can be a little bit confusing at first, but I think that you'll see that after you use them a little bit, they're going to be very useful and allow us to do a lot more with our spreadsheets, especially when, when we get into how we can actually use uh, the code within AppScript to manipulate our spreadsheet and do some interesting things. Uh, so keep an eye out for those next few videos. And for now, thanks for watching.